Good afternoon and aloha from this studio in beautiful downtown Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama with another Think Tech show. And today we're going to be discussing an expression of Japan cool exports from Japan globally in the world of fashion, retail, a global reach. And in a world with so much competition and so much brands available in department stores to choose from, how does a company like Uniqlo, that's what we're going to be talking about, succeed and they've come to Hawaii? But why Hawaii and all the business design aspects of opening, launching, a store at the Alamoana Center in, in Honolulu. We have our guest, COO of Uniqlo Hawaii, Inc., Yuya Tanahashi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. My name is Yuya Tanahashi, and I'm Uniqlo Hawaii CEO. Thank you so much. Now, the first thing is, like I ask all my guests, where were you born and raised? Um, I was born in Fukuoka, Japan. Uh, raised in Japan, but I lived in USA, New York when I was eight years old, 11 years old. And after that, I went back to Japan and lived in Japan. From that. And, and uh, did you go to college in Japan? Which one? Uh, I went to Aoyamagaku University in Japan as a college. And did you enter Uniqlo right after college? Yes, I entered right after college, 2006. Now, we in the, in the West, in America, have heard about the um, uh, joining a company and, and so forth. Was it a very uh, a challenging experience for the interviews to get into a company like Uniqlo? Um, yes, but it actually was really interesting through the uh, interview process. Uh, I went to interview for different uh, companies as well. But uh, Uniqlo interviews were more uh, friendly in a way oh. and um, was really interesting. And why did you join Uniqlo? I just really like the speed of uh, their decision making. I, I had the final interview and they just called me right away. Oh, right, right. And it, I just felt, you know, something to it. So I made my mind uh, at that moment. Now, in college or before, did you like the world of fashion and design? Yes, I liked the world of fashion. I, I did a part-time job in a store, uh, not Uniqlo though, but um, I was into it. And when I was looking for a job, uh, Uniqlo uh, stood up and uh, I went to it. Well, now your first job uh, was in a store in the suburbs, western suburbs of Tokyo, in an uh, area, a small city called Sengawa. Yep. How, how, and, and it wasn't the Ginza, and it wasn't you know, Osaka. Mm -hmm. How was that experience uh, working with Uniqlo and its uh, products and, and uh, customers, the residents of Sangawa, for the first time? Mm. So we have a program called UMC, Uniqlo Manager Candidate Program. So right after college, we have that six months program. And then uh, you get taught a lot of things. But uh, you're a manager candidate, so your expectation is to become a manager right. uh, while you basically know nothing yet. So it was you know, learning from associates, uh, not only the managers, and trying to uh, become the teacher for them as early mm. as possible. So that was the first six months experience I went through. And how, and how was it? Did you enjoy it? It was challenging. Uh, you know, in Japan, we hear a lot of the senpai kohai system. Mm -hmm. Did it work for you? It did. Um, it was challenging in a sense that I had, I had to be a teacher when I don't know anything yet. So I really need to learn things quickly. And um, I've learned that it's really, really the mindset that's really important. As long as you want to become better and uh, be a teacher for your team members as early as possible, then the associates that have many years of experience will accept you and teach you more. So that was a really good learning experience for me. These are good insights to how a company uh, we think is very Japanese mm. uh, then uh, adopts or adapts those systems for global reach, mm. uh, going into hiring people in North America or Southeast Asia, China, and mm. Europe. And you spent about uh, five years or so uh, in, in the domestic Japan. Mm -hmm. And um, did they come to you uh, when you started your uh, uh, international global assignment 
uh, in, uh, in New York uh, City in 2012, did they come to you or did you really want to go outside and, 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 uh, and, and do business uh, internationally? So I always had in mind to work abroad uh, because that's one of the experiences my father gave me when I was young and it really helped me in many ways um, and I really enjoyed that. So I, I always had that in mind when I was working in Unico, even in domestic cases. Um, but I thought I had to prepare myself to be in a way successful when I'm really assigned because if I don't know anything about customers or stores or uh, how the store's functioning, I thought I had nothing to teach. Um, so uh, it took me five years to kind of prepare that, but uh, I always had that in mind. That's terrific. Well, before we go into further about the, the world of uh, fashion and retail, what is Uniqlo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this uh, uh, brand that we hear so much? And, and, and of course, it led to the opening of the uh, Alamona uh, store. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back in time, and it has very humble beginnings in a small city called Ube, in Yamaguchi Prefecture. And I don't think many people know where that is, uh, but it's not Tokyo, it's not Osaka. And from there, uh, it, it, it expanded globally, and it must appeal to a global audience, uh, mm. to, uh, like cars, Japanese cars, uh, Japanese electronics, now Japanese fashion. But how, what kind of journey was that uh, to become a global brand? Mm. I think there was a lot of try and error, but our uh, basic concept never changed. Our clothes were made for all and we want all, all the customers around the world to enjoy it. And uh, we, we want to create clothes that meet customer needs uh, in all aspects. Why don't you uh, hold, hold up that, uh, is that a jacket, the first one, the gray one? Uh, gray, no, the yeah. Just, yeah. Can you can explain uh, uh, what this is and, and, and uh, uh, what kind of fabric, is, uh, fabric it is. So this is a light pocketable paka uh, that we carry in our stores globally. Um, it, it, it goes into pouches, so if you want to you know, bring when you're traveling, right, right. it's convenient. And then it has uh, functions like UV cuts, so if you wear them, you don't really need to put a, a sun, sun cream. Right. Yeah, so you know, it's really about the functionality and then the quality and how affordable it is. So this is just one uh, example item that I uh, can show how we create products. So is this just for men or women? Or? We have all for kids and men and women. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So, so uh, what, and, and um, what, what, do you know uh, the first store for Uniqlo that was outside Japan? First store of Uniqlo that was outside of Japan, uh, I think it was in Europe. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah. And, and, and so there are hundreds now of these stores all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't, why don't we go to the first uh, photo uh, uh, and, and get an insight into uh, Uniqlo? Okay. So this is um, your grand opening of your Uniqlo um, uh, store in Ala Moana. And we see a Shinto priest in a ceremony opening uh, the store. And, and, uh, but what led to the launch of the store here in Hawaii? To us, uh, Hawaii, we're waiting for the store, mm -hmm. and it's finally come. Uh, mm -hmm. When was it? Was it uh, 2018 uh, this year? So grand opening yeah. was, yes, um, this year, January. Um, but we opened a pop-up small store um, last year, June 1st. So we had a store about a year now. And, and uh, what led to the decision to open a store in, in Hawaii? Uh, because I, we can understand uh, in London, New York, Singapore, mm -hmm. Beijing, Hong Kong, these are world-class cities with very large uh, consumer markets. Mm -hmm. Hawaii barely has 1.3 million people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, however, having said that, it attracts over 10 million visitors mm -hmm. a year, and out of that, Two million are ja from Japan, mm -hmm. and plus people from China, Europe, uh, and, and Korea, and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. so, so what led to uh, specifically a, a store, and is it different or the same as other stores globally? Mm -hmm. So we were searching for opportunity to open in Hawaii for many years, and uh, last year I think was the best timing, considering the fact there was a 150-year anniversary of the Gangnam Mono. And we really found the location that meets our needs, which is in Aramoana, you know, the biggest um, in the United States. And um, everything, timing was perfect. Everything went well to open up the store last year. So uh, that, that's that for the timing. And then what's unique about our store is that we carry lineups that the other Uniqlo stores in the world doesn't carry. Okay. For, for example, these. Yeah, Aloha describe shirt. your shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 
this Aloha shots, we, you know, searched the market, researched the market, and, you know, saw a lot of opportunity uh, in Aloha Shards. So uh, we created this line before we launched. Um, it's a uh, rayon fabrication, and it's wrinkle-free, oh, so yeah, yeah. you don't have to iron them. Right, right, yeah. yeah, and it's been a popular item uh, since opening, and right. we're thinking of adding additional patterns and uh, having uh, collaborations and creating uh, a more a variety of lineup for Aloha Shards. And, and, and uh, do you know, of course, that the um, designs for Aloha Shirts, mm. uh, especially in the 1940s and 50s, came from Japanese Hiroshiki mm -hmm. that was brought in by Japanese immigrants. So there is a kind of a historical design um, ancestry mm -hmm. <laughs> to Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, when your uh, Uniqlo uh, uh, staff and researchers design, make new designs, uh, do they do it entirely in Japan, or do they uh, collaborate with people in Hawaii? How, how is that done? So we get all the insights uh, from the local uh, members, and we have a lot of discussion behind the scene. Um, so uh, first we have a couple samples, and then go over the patterns, and then make our final decisions. Um, and um, some works, some doesn't work. So yeah. we just have to keep elevating and try to find the best pattern or colors or size or the fit mm -hmm. for the consumers. Okay, next, uh, next photo, please. Well, this is your uh, store. At an angle, it shows two stories. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, now, is there a reason for its two stories? Uh, it differentiates uh, uh, products and, uh, uh, for different uh, uh, fashion or, or demographics, your market. Why is that? Um, so we need a scale to really show our product lineup. So we not only carry these exclusive lineups, but we carry these worldwide essential items that you know, uh, we are famous for. Uh, and in order to show that whole lineup, we need uh, space that can uh, showcase those lineup. And then uh, the reason for two floors when it comes to the Moana is um, second floor we thought has more customer traffic as a mall. Um, so we thought it's uh, good to have two floors in the Moana. Now, when you say you have a core, okay, mm -hmm. uh, can you describe that core product? You must have that the same core product in all your stores, mm -hmm. and then you have the Hawaii specific, Hawaii focused design uh, 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 line over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, tell me, what is what is the core? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because uh, some people refer to some of your uh, lightweight uh, T-shirts and so mm -hmm. forth that, be, <laughs> that are very light and warm, for example, mm -hmm. or certain line of jackets. What would you consider? the iconic or uh, when people say, ah, oh, that's Uniqlo. You know, what, what, what is that core uh, 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 summer models or, or uh, uh, clothing line? So when we think really about the essential items, we think about short sleeve t-shirts, we think about short mm. uh, for female, we think about dresses and start. Um, denim is, you know, for us, right. essential, essential item. Uh, sweat is also an um, essential item. All the inner wear is essential item. So, uh, for us, it's really the daily clothes that a customer can wear every single day. And we keep you know, elevating those lineup so that uh, we meet the customer needs. But of course, you have four seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and do you have four season um, uh, design wear at your store in, in Hawaii? Although it's mostly one season. <laughs> yes, so that's the uh, unique part about Hawaii, I think. So I think the t-shirt is going to be a year-round essential for Hawaii customers. But at the same time, I think many customers travel abroad. Uh, so winter, winter items, uh, we have to look into carefully and try to carry for those customers that want to purchase winter mm -hmm. items, even in Hawaii. Well, we'll go into more, even more unique things mm -hmm. after this break. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at 5. I'll see you there. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show, and it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. <laughs>
We are back with Mr. Hanahashi of Uniqlo Hawaii, and we're delving and exploring how Uniqlo designs all kinds of clothing wear and fashion for different markets. We're just talking about the core market. And I, I wanted to ask, um, when people buy or look at fashion from Uniqlo, do they look what are they looking at? Are they looking for the design itself? Are they looking for technology of the fabric that is better than other uh, uh, brands? Are they looking at pricing? What is, when you look at the whole you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, consumer focus analysis, what percentage would you say would go to design, uh, technology, or fabric? Uh, and, and also um, a pricing. What, what would that be? Hmm. I think consumers are looking at in all aspects, and that kind of determines the quality, um, fabrication, functionality, uh, affordable price, and if all matches. I think customer will be really attracted to it. So um, it's a little tough to say which percentage in hmm. in which aspect, but um, uh, in in I think quality kind of explains it all. Now, where are your uh, uh, fashion um, uh, clothing line manufactured? Hmm. Uh, are, are, they, are they all over the world, or do you have uh, areas where you manufacture and export out to your stores in various cities around the globe? Ma ma majority are in Asia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not one location, but depends on the product, uh, uh, different countries. So. But it's majority in Asia. Now, going back to Hawaii, and you described unique uh, uh, designs. That Are these sold only in Hawaii, some of these unique Hawaii? Uh, or will they be sold in places that are warmer, like Singapore and, and you know, um, or uh, Italy or Bahamas will, will, or Florida? Would they be sold outside of Hawaii? So some items, it's really only unique to Hawaii. Oh. Um, some items, specific locations, specifically for uh, Asia that has uh, similar climate, uh, but yeah, those, those, mm, some items are only in Hawaii. Now, if people who are uh, into design or they have small startups or companies in Hawaii and want to uh, have Uniqlo look at their designs or look at their uh, fashion, do you have a way to collaborate or mm. a partner mm. uh, uh, with these local designers? Mm. So we launched the uh, Feel Hawaii UT. UT stands for Uniqlo T-shirts uh, when we opened. And we collaborated with uh, Pow Wow, uh, which is led by Jasper. And uh, we created a T-shirt with uh, Matthew, Tapia, and Kevin Lyons. And that's actually only sold in Uniqlo Hawaii. Oh, okay. uh, but that's just an example. But we're always searching for uh, good collaborations uh, that we can work together. Are you looking for uniquely Hawaii uh, fashion, or are you looking for something that would appeal globally? I think appealing globally is, you know, the core when we think about collaboration. Um, yeah. In in the fashion world, uh, and this is a bigger question uh, about uh, retail and fashion, are consumers becoming more and more the same? Like people in Hong Kong, Seoul, London, New York, and mm -hmm. Honolulu have the same design consciousness when they look at the clothes? Or are they uh, differences? Mm -hmm. Like when you're working in Hawaii for about a year now, mm -hmm. and you must have a feel of the Hawaii consumer. The Hawaii consumer is more alike or different than, than other uh, mm -hmm. uh, consumers globally? I mean, I think it's totally different oh. location by location. Hawaii customer really like the relaxed oh. uh, silhouette. Uh, I, I think it's because one of the weather right. uh, is really hot. Um, so uh, the more relaxed style, uh, the more comfortable they can be. So it's really based on the location and uh, customer's uh, preference uh, based off of that uniqueness of the location. That's very insightful. Next, next photo, please. Here we have a group picture. And, and uh, now I chose the picture because is one of your uh, focus, uh, focus for the future families? Mm. Or is it uh, 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 cut into uh, or, or portioned off into you know, men, women, children? Or is it a, kind of a family demographic? Or what are, you, what are you trying to say in this photo? So we're trying to say our clothes are made for all. 
Oh, yeah, cool. and also we're trying to say that we have poses that can uh, fit and suit the needs of the uh, Hawaii consumers. Right. So that's the uh, behind the scene when it comes to that uh, photo. Right, right, right. Next photo, please. And this is a uh, focus on the women. And uh, I can see, you know, they are uh, um, uh, reminiscent or the mumu tradition and design and so forth. Uh, is that something that uh, you were looking for in this um, kind of a line that, uh, how do you, uh, well, when you talk about design, do you bring uh, uh, back ideas uh, about design back to your headquarters in Japan? Mm -hmm. And how is that done? Uh, do you go back and explain about uh, preferences by consumers to your designers in Japan, or your designers come to Hawaii and do surveys, marketing, uh, analysis? Well, how is that process? I think both, both sides. Uh, we bring our ideas from what we receive from customers, and then uh, the headquarters come and research on their own too. So it's both ends. Well, that's very exciting. And, and um, uh, you know, one of the areas that um, uh, is, is um, uh, not really talked about is R&D, mm -hmm. about fabrics, you know, and so forth. And you pointed out rayon, you pointed out, um, you know, uh, non-iron and so forth, and many aspects about um, uh, wicking off sweat, you know, mm -hmm. for, for, uh, for, uh, for sportswear and so forth. Do you have uh, R and D that uh, uh, headquarter back at headquarters that you have staff looking at fabrics all the time, mm -hmm. and and, and wh who do you uh, what kind of people work there uh, to analyze these fabrics? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we have a global headquarters in Japan. Uh, and there's uh, members that's working in those departments. Um, the members consist from uh, members that experience store managers. Right. Um, it's a, a big team with a variety of people involved. Oh, great. Next photo, please. This is a very Hawaiian um, kind of exhibit-like uh, uh, you know, uh, arrangement in your store that I found very interesting. And it gives a Hawaiian look, uh, mm -hmm. again, with the ukulele and, and uh, other things. And, and uh, what, where did you uh, go for inspiration to mm. assemble? Do you have people who design, you know, exhibits, uh, clothing uh, uh, from Japan, or they're mostly local people who mm. source, you know, these arrangements? So we have an um, IMD team in Global Headquarters in Japan, and they came to Hawaii and discussed what we can do, in a sense, differently to really show uh, appreciation of us to the uh, society uh, and we focused on uh, creating Hawaii uh, specific aloha shots and in the in-store presentation we discussed what we can do to show that. So uh, that's uh, what you saw in the photo, uh, really communicating about the history of aloha shots and uh, kind of Hawaii specific original uh, presentation that we implemented. One of the um, driving forces, or the driving force uh, behind you, of course, the uh, president or, or the CEO, Mr. Yanai. Uh, and and uh, where did he, uh, what can you attribute to Mr. Yanai's global kind of thinking? Did, did it come from his upbringing? Where did he learn how to uh, make products that would appeal and be attractive to global mm. consumers? Mm. So we really value the customer's voice. Uh, it never changed, and it's never going to change. And how we react quickly to the customer's voice is going to be really important. Uh, Mr. always says uh, innovation and creation, uh, and then after that, marketing. Um, so the basic idea of never change and will not, uh, it's just about how we take action quickly. Uh, to the customer needs of each location. Now, looking at Alamona store, uh, after a year, what did you learn mm. uh, from, from listening to Hawaii customers, mm. working with local staff? Mm. And of course, you said that you were uh, attracted to join Unicode because of the uh, uh, quick 
managerial response, you know, mm. decision making and so mm. forth, and, and getting uh, uh, the right um, products to the customer. But in your Hawaii experience, and you can compare it to New York or West Coast or Boston or others, uh, what did you learn uh, from, from Hawaii? Okay, so first product lineup, of course. Um, some products were uh, good and some product didn't really work out. Um, so that's what we learned um, and adapting ourselves. Uh, another thing is sizes. Um, oh. We thought the size was, you know, meeting the needs. Right. Uh, uh, for a couple of products, it tends to be too small. Too small, right? Yeah. So we have to have you know uh, right. bigger bigger sizes right, right. for specific items. Um, so product related, we learn so much. Um, how to reach the customers? Right. We're, we're learning. Right. Um, we thought you know there's more recognition of us, but um, we're still new to the right. market. And we really want the uh, local Hawaii customers to visit our stores uh, on a daily basis, if not weekly basis. And how do we reach uh, to those consumers? Uh, we're still learning and adapting ourselves. So there's quite a lot of um, mm -hmm. learnings uh, and adapting that we need to make. Well, that's a very good point about um, how to reach to millennials <clears throat> and, and families and so forth. I mean, you, your brand has to uh, really compete against Zara, H&M, uh, Gap, I mean, many, many, many uh, 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 fashion brands out there. Uh, and to me, I think Uniqlo was, uh, was best known to people who traveled to Japan, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, or sometimes to New York or, or the West Coast, they would see that store and, and, and try on um, products. Uh, but I think that Japan connection uh, is still very strong. I mm -hmm. mean, there's a lot of Hawaii people who go to uh, Tokyo or Osaka and, or go to the Ginza or, or uh, Hankyu department stores or what, uh, that area and they would see Uniqlo. So mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's a branding uh, um, a bridge mm -hmm. uh, from Japan and, and people who travel to Japan. But you're correct that for many people who have not traveled, mm -hmm. it is not yet a, a very recognizable brand. And, and, and that's something that I think uh, Uniqlo uh, w w would work more with social media, mm -hmm. with young people, viral kind of things that mm -hmm. would really expand that market. I think th that, that's a, a wonderful way to mm -hmm. attract people and see value, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, you're correct that, uh, you know, the, the size thing, if you don't get it right, then you suffer from that. People mm -hmm. say, oh, it's not going to have my size. I am not going there uh, anymore. But if you change that and make it a very local product, mm -hmm. again, people will be... Uh, amazed and we'd be very attracted uh, mm -hmm. to, to Uniqlo. Now you're having a Uniqlo Day weekend celebration very soon in June. Yes. Tell me about it. So last year, June 1st, we opened our pop-up store okay. in Aramoana Center Court, third floor. And it's a one-year anniversary in oh, a sense. Okay. So we, we are going to have a uh, one-year anniversary uh, event uh, this year in June 1st and 2nd. Um, and we have the main store in uh, Aramoana, Ever Wing. Right, right. Um, so we're going to have uh, exciting products launching on that day. Uh, we're going to have uh, a couple of events uh, around those timing to, in a sense, you know, show our uh, gratitude to the Hawaii consumers and then give back as much as possible. Well, I think that's a great way of, of really um, uh, being part of the community, mm -hmm. you're, you're correct, because community is, is, is a very strong uh, uh, word and, and the sense of community is very uh, embedded in, in Hawaii culture. The word ohana, for example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, has become prevalent in mm -hmm. defining you know, family, community, and, and, and to be part of that in, in Hawaii. Uh, but we're coming to the end of the show, it's been so fast, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask more questions. Uh, but the, and, and, um, uh, you, you, what's the future of Uniqlo in Alamada? Would you like to have other stores in, in the neighbor islands or just this store? We're always searching for opportunities, oh. yeah, uh, including neighbor islands. Uh, our first focus is going to be Alamada and then uh, increasing the recognition uh, and adapting ourselves to really meet uh, all the customer needs in Hawaii. And the second step is going to come from there. Well, that's a wonderful ending to a wonderful show. And I thank you, Mr. Tanahashi. And my name is Ray Tsuchiyama with another episode of Business in a Bite. Thank you very much.